Hi friends, my name is Pranav Shukla. Welcome to Relief Tutorials. Today we are going for English textbook of standard 10 NCRT. And uh, today we are taking poetry for consideration. And we are going for the first poetry that is Dust of Snow. Friends, uh, the poem is very simple and a very small one. It might hardly take uh, 15 seconds if you go for it reading. But as you know, the author is the, the writer, the poet is Robert Frost. And Robert Frost is known for something beyond the written things. Friends, uh, before commencing the poetry, I will discuss something about Robert Frost. Robert Frost is very pop highly popular poet. He's popular not only in America but in the all over the world. And uh, we already gone through it even in the ninth standard. There was a very powerful poetry, the road not taken with a very huge powerful message. So the poetry again was a very small one. Friends, Robert Frost is always believing in he believes in developing some deeper meanings. He develops more and more possibilities behind the text. So for him, what is beyond is poetry. He believed any work of art is actually what is unsaid. So what is underneath the words, what is not said, what is unsaid is real poetry. So we have the same thing over here. Uh, the storyline, the theme, the idea is very simple, but once we go deeper into the meanings, we will find a very huge, heavy, powerful message and it deals with number of themes. So in this session we are going for reading of the poetry, discussing all its themes, question answers and the poetic devices like figures of speech and all that. So let's go for it friends. The story is very simple, it happens to everyone, it is quite common to all. You people are now 10 standard students, you can understand this, the agenda behind the topic. You have to apply a lot of observation from the day to day life, a lot of guts and understanding. Sometimes the things are in front of us, but we are not able to understand it. But now you people are mature enough to understand the surrounding, what's going on around. Friends, it might have also happened to you sometimes, or it happens many a times. You feel very down, out of mood, feeling very sleepy or easy or feeling very slack. There is no enthusiasm, there is no excitement, you don't like to speak, you don't like to talk to anyone. Feeling very down out of mood. And the go the day almost goes like that. And somewhere in the time of day you feel that even the rest of the day will go like that. So you feel your day is wasted. You lose the interest in living, in doing anything. And suddenly you might have observed, and suddenly something happens around you. Uh, maybe a child from the family is just running by you, playing in front of you. A little activity from that child. Something you see outside your house. Maybe sitting by the side of window or seeing out of the window you can see. Maybe a bird in the tree chirps. There is a movement of certain birds over there. A squirrel is running behind the other one. Or if, if there is cloudy sky and the whole day has gone something like that, dark, cloudy, very grey, looking very despondent and at the same time you see suddenly a dark silver or golden line at the edges, at the brinks of the clouds and it brings a kind of light that looks like a very new ray of hope. Suddenly you feel charged excited to see such change in the nature and they pours in sudden excitement into you 
and you suddenly feel very much worked up, energetic. You shake off all the negativity, all the hopelessness and again become very enthusiastic, excited and start doing your activities with all the kind of joy and happiness. And you suddenly feel your now day is saved. It will not be destroyed totally. So, what I mean to say, friend, okay, nature has got the power of healing. It gives you sure joy. The joy is guaranteed. The reason why doing hard work throughout the year, when it falls vacation, we are going outside. And normally, when we go out of station, just to enjoy the vacation, we don't select a very crowdy and very uh, artificial, full of people, full of traffic kind of place, would like to go for hill stations, any natural retreat where we can spend some time of serenity and peace and some family time and we can enjoy the nature to its best. So the only reason is nature has got that power of healing. It brings you out of the whole, the boredom of the whole year, the monotony of the entire process of the year and gives you, uh, makes you rejuvenated. You feel very much charged, excited. This is the power of nature. So the same kind of thing, one of the power of nature, that positive side of the nature is presented in front of you through this poetry. This poetry may be a very small one, but has got some powerful devices. It is, it has got metaphor, meton, metonymy. It is full of imagery, symbolism. So, personally, I like the poetry very much. Let's go for reading it. Dust of Snow by Robert Frost. The way across, see friends, the, the story is what? Okay. A poet, well, a person almost was in the mood of negativity. He was feeling very much down, out of mood, looking depressed, very sad, sorrowful. And in the same state of mood, he is just wandering here and there and reaching to the inside of the forest. Well, there were a number of trees. It is wintry surrounding. The whole place is covered with snow. All the trees and saplings and plants and everything. And uh, just in the same mood, might have lost in thinking. He reached under a hemlock tree. Friend, hemlock is a tree with some poisonous, poisonous extract. It has got white flowers. You might remember uh, Socrates was given hemlock to drink when he was supposed to be killed. So it has got some poisonous extract. So it's obviously a sign of negativity. And under that tree the poet stands. There was a crow on the branch of that tree. And uh, suddenly this crow, again the, the presence of crow, crow is very unusual. Normally when we have the poetry, we have some beautiful things in the poetry. Beautiful flowers and plants and especially trees. Some shady beautiful trees with flowers, attractive flowers. But here we have taken hemlock. So the poet has tried to create the mood of the poetry by introducing certain negative things that symbolically represent negativity around us, around us that surrounds us and makes us very much out of mood, negative also. So crow is also the symbol of bad omen. Other birds, beautiful birds could have been taken over there like cuckoo, like peacock, like Sparrow, pigeon, anything could have been taken, but he has taken crow. 
crow is dark black the voice is very harsh and in certain cultures like our indian culture it is the symbol of negativity so so all this sets the surrounding the mood of the poetry and the bird stands under that branch where the crow is sitting poet is in a very bad mood suddenly this crow shakes himself and a dust of snow or some particles of snow fall upon the poet and that slight change in the nature in the surrounding brings the poet out of the reverie of the bad mood and he feels very much fresh excited because something has diverted his attention from that negativity and the change was very welcoming one very positive one he suddenly realized that there is something exciting in the surrounding and he suddenly feels the change of the mood and feels that the rest of the day which was going to be rude now has been saved by this slight change in the nature so this is what the whole story of the poetry <coughs> so let's read the poetry friends the way a crow shook down on me the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart one of the shaking of the crow and falling dropping of the dust from the hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and of his heart was very down maybe very much sorrowful very sad full of negativity out of mood suddenly been charged and felt a change in mood and that happening a slight change had saved some part of the day one of the rest of the part of the day that might be rude rude matlab might be full of regret might be full of negativity would go on the same way it was going on now would be saved of the day i had rude matlab he felt that the kind of mood that he had he was going to ruin the rest of the part of the day but that was saved because of what that slight happening in the nature that brings a lot of positivity into the poet so this is the whole poetry friends but if we just go deeper into the meaning and we think like robert frost as he tried to bring to you so we just come across number of themes out of this poetry i just i just suppose okay it could deal with number of themes over there the first that we derive out of this poetry is uh, it is of course matlab when he says okay the crow is there on the branch it was sitting over there suddenly it shakes so what does it shake it flaps its wings why does it shake uh why the poet has taken hemlock tree why the poet has considered crow it seems to be as it as if it is already well planned why the poet needs to go to the forest in so wintry shed it is so snowy so very much cold what could be the reason behind his sadness his sorrow so number of thinking of the poet also invites us whatever for guessing for speculating the entire situation there is a lot of work to be done even from the side of reader so the poetry might be very small one but as the reader has got a lot to do behind the poetry so you also guess and you share your ideas with me so the thing that i come across i suppose is it is a communication between nature and human matlab one way or the other way in our day to day chores in making the things done throughout the day we forget about the nature or things happening around us though in the urban area nature is very scarce but it is still there some trees are there sky is there open and some change of light throughout the day a lot of happening a lot of happenings are there from the nature around us but we hardly give any attention to that one so poet has given us the chance to communicate with the nature through this poetry another the way the nature 
then slight falling of the dust of snow brings the change in the mood and the rest of the day is totally saved. So that shows that nature is healing and helping with negative human feelings. It could also be the theme of the poetry. Then we also realize okay, how powerful is the nature amidst all the negativity, all in the bad mood when the person is full of sorrow with all the worldly worries and all these worries might be very difficult to overcome. This nature with some slight change can make it can can make it really possible. Well, it 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 fills our life with all the positivity. So that is the power of nature. So we realize the significance of small natural events that can change the entire day, maybe sometimes even the entire life. There is a lot to learn from the nature. He was remembering when he was at Tagore, Milton. And Shakespeare himself, they all believed that nature is the true teacher. Uh, Wordsworth is called as the high priest of nature, and he believed that what nature can teach, even the sages and teachers cannot do, books cannot do. So, nature could be a great, could be the greatest teacher, and even the small happening in the nature has got a huge significance. And apart from all these things, it also juxtaposes human complexity. But how, how we have made our lives so much complex, full of worry and negativity and anxiety and all this. God has given us birth to enjoy the nature, to do our stuff and be happy with the limited resources and feel satisfied and contented with what we have. But we have made our life full of complexity. At the same time, the nature which has got a lot of complexity still presents the things very simply. So nature is all about simplicity and human is all about complexity. So they are both put side by side and made us realize how complex we are and how simple the nature is. So this is, friend, the kind of themes that we can have out of this poetry. This is the inner meaning, inner sense that we have to derive by this poetry. This is what so called as something beyond the text, something what is not said over there. Friends, here I guess hemlock tree and uh, crow are the symbol of negativity, sorrow, sadness, all the darkness in the life that surrounds us, we are one way or the other we living under it as the poet stands under the hemlock tree and crow which is on the hemlock tree. But we have to learn to bring positivity out of all this negativity. That is our destiny that we have to live in the negative world, dark world. But this dark world also has got a ray of hope. Bad days always are not there, they are not eternal. After something bad, happiness comes and the same thing happens, that dark crow suddenly shakes and his shaking brings a joy in, in poet's life. So the dust of snow is something of a happening that is in nature and that is the symbol of positivity that brings joy to us. So it is a symbol of joy and happiness that brings us and gets us out of that effect of bad mood. So it's all symbolism, hemlock tree, crow, the symbolism of negativity, sorrow, sadness, darkness and the falling of dust of snow is a symbol of positivity, a ray of light, a ray of hope in our life. It is a symbol of joy, happiness in our life. This is all dust of snow, friends. Let's see very uh, limited number of figures of speech, one of the poetic devices that we have. Friend, here you can see the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. Here the line does not get ended, it is without full stop. 
So this sentence is carried on in the next line. Again carried on the next line. You can just see the whole poetry is actually ended right in the end over there. So the, this is the whole, the whole poetry is actually a single sentence fragmented into various verses and divided into two stanza but actually it is a single sentence. So all these verses ending not with the end of the sentence. So sentence is carried on or run on in the next line. So one of the very important figure of speech run on line or enjubment uh, would be applicable over there. <coughs> And here the poetry gets ended. Apart from this, this crow, this hemlock tree are actually the imagery or the kind of representation of some negativity and sadness that we have in the life. So it could be imagery or Metonymy. Imaginary means when the poet tries to create an imaginary world, taking the consideration of all the kind of things in the nature or in the surrounding to make us imagine a certain situation would be called as imaginary. At the same time, metonymy, some words represent the other words and they are the representation of those words. So these words actually are put over there instead of the other words. So the representation is something else and they permanently represent those words. So these words are actually the change of name. Instead of sadness, sorrow, instead of negativity, the words are put symbolically representing those feelings. They are crow and hemlock. So it is also called as change of name. So this change of name is called as friends metonymy. At the same time, the small particle of the snow are compared with dust. So it is an indirect comparison which is called as metaphor. When there is direct comparison using the word like like or as, it could, it could be called as simile. But when the comparison is made over there without any word like like or as, it is called as indirect comparison. So here dust is indirectly representing the particles of snow. So they compared with dust, it is called as what? Metaphor. Then comes here, has given my heart. Here you can see friend, these two consonant sounds, her, has, heart, are repeated in the same words. So in the beginning or in the middle of two or more words, if you have got the Repeated consonant sounds would be called as the figure of speech alliteration. So this is the use of alliteration. At the same time, has given my heart a change of mood. See, a friend, it is said, heart feels the change of mood. Actually, the person himself feels the change of mood. So, heart is a part of body, is a part of the person representing the whole persona. So when a part stands for whole or the whole stands for part, would be called as synecdoche. So here heart feels the change of mood means the poet feels the change of mood. So when the poet uses heart, he uses synecdoche. Again, Saved and some, these two consonant sounds are actually the figure of speech called alliteration. And saved some part of the day, I had rude. 
so head and root the verse has got internal rhymes within the words if you have the two or more words ending with the same kind of rhyming scheme would be called as internal rhymes so it is the example of internal rhymes head and root if the rhymings is seen in the end of the poetry thus the way we have crow and snow me and tree could be called as external rhymes and there's also decide the rhyming scheme of the poetry so here the rhyming scheme if we just give uh, the symbolic letters to this crow stands for a me stands for b again snow stands for a tree stands for b heart stands for a mood stands for b part stands for a stands for b so the rhyming scheme rhyming scheme of the poetry is a b a b so this is the figure of speech friends now have the textbook with me so i'm reading all the question answers and we'll discuss it the first question is what is dust of snow what does the poet say has changed his mood and how has the poet mood changed so friends very naturally you have to write down the theme of the entire poetry the dust of snow is the snow particles that we have on the branch of the tree where the crow is sitting the tree is hemlock tree when the poet is in a very bad in a very sad sorrowful mood and wandering in the forest when stands under the hemlock tree and by chance at the same time the crow moves and shakes himself and the particles of snow that is called as dust of snow drops upon the poet and he felt a little tantalized and that slight happening of the nature diverted him or deviated him from that sad mood and he felt very much fresh because something new happened because of the nature to him and that really changed his mood and he felt the rest of the day which was going to be rude now it been saved before writing the poetry better you are writing the answer of any question friends before you build up the introduction where you write down the name of the poetry name of the poet and a bit idea about the theme entirely so don't forget about that